So, uh, a very good afternoon to each and everyone. Today we'll be uh, studying the use of remote sensing technology for its application in hydrology how remote sensing in JIS is used in hydrology. So first, in order to know hydrology, you must know what is water, what is its spatial dimension, what is uh, the situation throughout the world, what is the amount of water that is available, water budgeting. So water is one of the prime elements responsible for climate and life on any planetary system. Uh, anybody cannot live with uh, without water. Each and every one requires water, but uh, the amount of water that is used for drinking or irrigation is very limited in India. So if you see the images of the earth, you'll see a lot of blue in and around the land continent, but this water cannot be used for drinking purpose. So don't think that uh, we have got sufficient amount of water, we have to uh, not to worry about its hydrological condition or we have got sufficient uh, number. So uh, when you're talking about water, first you must know what you mean by hydrology. So hydrology means earth logy, means water logy, means it's a science that deals with the, so it's a science that deals with the occurrence where does that water is occurring what is the distribution where it is distributed what is the movement how it is moving what is the property of the earth and its relationship the environment with each phase of hydrological cycle so uh, it's very good uh, to understand key this water is very precious we have to uh, what you have to conserve each and every drop of water and for that, the understanding of hydrology is very important because it involves development of scientific knowledge. It involves instrumentation, mathematical principles to solve water-related problems in the society. Then you can see that what is the different kinds of water available in the earth. Then you will be seeing what is the entire scenario what is the this is the indian map where the northern plant you will see uh, there is a snow below that you'll be finding mountains underlying that you'll be finding crop irrigated area and then you have got deserts in the western part then in between you'll be finding the plateau terrain and at last the forested area so the total geographical area of india is 3.2 million square kilometers out of which 1.41 million square kilometers is the net zone area and the amount of rainfall that we receive is 88 centimeters the glacial area is too big that is 8400 kilometers forest area is also good that is 20.6 percent of, of the forest cover then you have got uh, more than 7 percent of the world biodiversity we are very good our coastline is near about uh, 7,516 km long, so uh, very long coastlines. Then 7.6 uh, million hectares wetlands are there, good amount of area. And the biggest challenge is 1.2 billion population. That is the biggest challenge that in the entire world. Uh, we are one of the most populated countries of the world. So that is the biggest challenge. But uh, the challenge is our population is increasing. And the water is decreasing so this means that uh, we are responsible for the declination our activities our performance our understanding is near about we are the person who was responsible for all the mishap for all the mess that we are creating in the ecosystem whether that is a pandemic or whether that is a disaster whether it is, that is a declining a declining uh, water table or low agricultural productivity because our population is too big so if you are not looking into that you can have a, a food grain shortage and that can create a mess you can have a civil war you can have various kinds of rights so you can have various kinds of malnutrition so you have to see that proper scientific understanding so proper scientific instrumentation are being so as to 
uh, stop the area that are gradually being converted into land degradation category because uh, because of the increase in population and the changes what we have done to the ecosystem and to the environment the amount of uh, the degraded lands or the wastelands are increasing so we have to stop those uh, features from expanding and because our population is increasing uh, what we are doing, we are using furnitures, we are using wooden works for our windows, for our doors, for our uh, bedrooms, for our dining tables, for our furnitures. But uh, if I ask to each and every person, okay, how many number of trees you have planted? The, or if I have a questionnaire, out of uh, 20,000 population, 2,300 people will be saying that I have planted some tree. And the tree will be some rose uh, plantation, some uh, gardening but you're not uh, that won't uh, have a much effect on the environment but uh, we are using it so you have to understand ki if you are not having a balance if you are not having a minimum balance that is you'll be seeing more uh, disasters you'll be seeing more scarcity of rainfall and you cannot think what can happen and finally this coastal areas are being degraded and uh, because of the entire land use, land change, changes that we are doing, this will finally result in your snow areas and these snow areas will be melting downwards and will be creating a huge mess in the entire area and you can have a severe flooding, you can have, they can cause the hydropowers. So you have to have a control, you have to have understanding of the area. So again, we'll be going into some statistics as well as some visualization that uh, India out of total world area, we have a 2.4% of the area. And if we turn to the total world population, we have about 17%. That is a very large number. And we go for a water that is only 4% of the world. Means the 17% of the entire population of the world are only getting 4%. So you can see a big difference. And that is the biggest challenge that we are going to have in your future. So always there is a saying that the third world war will happen because of water. So statistically, you can see that there is a statement and the statement can be justified using the difference that we are seeing. So until unless you're not having a balance to it, uh, it's quite tough to maintain the entire ecosystem. So water resource per unit in BCM percentage, so average rainfall including snowfall is 4,000, means this is a total uh, rainfall that we are receiving, that is 100%. Then potential flow in rivers, the river that is flowing in river is 1869, that comprises 46.7% of out of 100%. And out of that, the utilizable water resource is 1123, that is 28.1%. And among which surface water uh, is 690 that comprises 70.3 percent and up negligible groundwater is 40 433 that is 10.8 percent only so the water need uh, in 2050 according to the population will be 1450 that is 129 percent is required and the de deficit if you subtract 1 1450 from 1123 there is a deficit of uh, 327 and that is 29 percent and that is a big amount and uh, if you are not uh, looking into this uh, you'll have a big mess in the coming future that's why honorable prime minister and various eminent scientists of uh, india honorable uh, Vajpayee has given the concept of river encounter linkage so if you do that at least uh, 200 uh, percent or 17.8 percent can be obtained using this lever interlinkage but uh, still a lot of uh, work has to be done in this topic because that is a topic of discussion rather than working something on a field so we have to act upon to have the balance and to seek the demand that we are going to have in the future you have to have this balance and you can see that uh, how the visually the rainfall area what is the pattern so you will see that the very less portion of the area are receiving high amount of rainfall otherwise uh, the situation is very poor 
So you can see that uh, statistically from 1942 to 2060, the British in Mollet says that our population is increasing. On the other uh, way around, over the decades, we have seen ki what is the uh, per capita utilizable surface water that we are using. You can see this is decreasing. This is increasing, both on the other side. So you have to have a balance. And for having a balance, you need a technology, you need a, a tool, you need a equipment, you need a subject. And for that, remote sensing is there, nothing to worry. Uh, here, the remote sensing NGS will provide you all the solutions to we have got a series of satellites that are available with us whether that is a ground bone or airborne whether you are talking about uh, geostationary satellites or a polar satellite view then active sensor microwave sensors so we have got a series of equipments that can be utilized and can be used for various purposes like uh, for water cycle missions I said grass satellites for column water content, TRM data and GPM for global precipitation, SMA for global soil moisture, INSAT and Megatropis for precipitation, Sural Altica for river water level, Resat for soil moisture, Kalpana for land surface temperature, US Eura for atmospheric humidity, Clouds Eurostata for snow and ice vegetation, Cloud set for cloud purifier, EOS aqua for atmospheric humidity, water storage, clouds, snow and ice, uh, resource two for vegetation, towns for total column volume, uh, sage for air quality, climate change, words for carbon management, air quality. So you can see that there are a lot uh, uh, strength of uh, satellite data sets that are available to us and we can go for various kinds of uh, multi-temporal data sets with various spatial resolution with various uh, uh, spectral resolution with various aerial coverage with various uh, resource monitoring oceanography cartography metrology so each and every satellite is meant for a purpose and we'll be using those satellites for their post process that we started from Bhaskar in 1979 to 81 then we went to set 1a 1b 1c 1 tt with uh, vhsr band and in set 2A, 2B, 2C, VHR, and then 1986, 2000, IRSP, 3A, 2, in set 2D, in set 2E, IRSP, 4, then 2001 to 2005, Kalpana, in set 3A, 2007, you've got OceanSat, uh, Scatrometos, in set 3D, Megatropis, Saran. So, this all satellites are used for atmospheric observation. So, the, our prime physical uh, technique for satellite image uh, observation is we want to have a delineation of different kinds of wetlands, turbidity, vegetation, NDVI, temperature of clouds using thermal and infrared land surface temperature. Then uh, using the microwave data sets, we want to see the water spreads, soil moisture content, the flood dynamics. Uh, using microwave emissions, passive radiometers, we'll be seeing the soil moisture rain rate then uh, through altimeter we'll be seeing the water level river recharge using the gray satellites or detection of gravity will be stating we'll be seeing the condition of the groundwater in the area and using the hyperfine spectrometer we'll be seeing the isotopic measurement in those areas so you can see that how uh, differently those uh, water molecules behave in various spectral channels these are the various kinds of colors of water that is indicative of different kinds of sediment in the, in the water and this sediment intent or different kinds of depth or different kinds of color are indicative of the soil moisture are indicative of the depth are indicative of the uh, contamination level so you can see that along the cities uh, uh, you can see the various kinds of color combination in sets of blue so they are indicative of various uh, characteristics so you can see that okay, how the different kinds of uh, water, the pure water, the pure water, the contaminated water, uh, the uh, water with sediments, without sediments, pure water, the water varies in substitute in their reflected uh, information. Then uh, if you are talking about the hydrology, you have to have a real understanding. This is the basics that we have already done about the water cycle you have to see how the clouds are formed how 
precipitation take place then this precipitation will come downwards as surface runoff and the surface runoff will go and get stored in some reservoir in lakes and some of the water from that will be infiltrated and percolated downwards somewhat it will be having as a soil motion on the surface some will be evapotranspirated then evapotranspiration will be done then you have got a snow melt runoff will be also coming to it and finally it will be going into the atmosphere so this is the entire water cycle that you have to have understanding of that area in order to do any kinds of uh, hydrological modeling so the important terms and the parameter that you must investigate or study is rainfall is movement runoff evapotranspiration surface runoff soil moisture surface water level river discharge groundwater so uh, water and energy balance we have already seen how this uh, seasonal uh, variations in rainfall then soil moisture can be easily seen using satellite images what are the various kinds of uh, moisture contained what is the kind of precipitation which area is going to have maximum rainfall which are the clouds which are going to produce high rainfall so all such condition all such understanding can be easily done using satellite remote sensing you can see how the kapna data for the different dates are being utilized to have understanding of the cyclone or the various kinds of uh, area that is going to receive a high amount of rainfall so using the satellite data you can see that uh, you can identify the various kinds of uh, areas which are going to be severely affected what are the amount of damage that has happened and apart from that you have got trmm data that is tropical rainfall measuring mission launched in 1997 to measure the tropical rainfall nearly it has uh, 16 years of record precipitation it was in partnership with nasa and uh, japan uh, aerospace uh, exploration agency jaxa and you can Uh, using this site you can download the uh, data sets from 1996 to till date where you can have a real time understanding of hourly data seven day rainfall data global flood and landslide monitoring then hurricane typhoons rain average anomalies climatology so all such data now data is not a big issue you will be getting all the data that are available and you have to use those data sets to have a final understanding of the area so using the satellite data sets we can identify and you can de uh, lineate or demarcate the various zones like which are the area which are flooded which are partially flooded which are fully saturated can be easily highlighted and we can overlay the different drainage boundary state boundary building boundary the road boundaries the land use to see the amount of damage to see the amount of flood inundation that has taken place in any area to see the chain dynamics analysis and on the other hand you can see the microwave data that has been used to mark and delineate the flooded partially and dry areas so we have got both the data sets whether you talk about optical data whether you talk about microwave data or whether you talk about soil moisture so all the data can be delineated and demarcated using various data sets where soil moisture influences meteorological and climatic processes and is uh, used for visible thermal infrared active microwave passive rain promed and the property that for soil moisture will be going for soil albedo index of refraction that advantage it provided large data set limitations in large noise in the image and there are many sources so when you are going for the thermal it provides the surface temperature advantage it has got a high resolution large swath area high frequency physical models disadvantage cloud cover noise sources can be meteorological factors can be topography can be vegetation then you have got active microwave then uh, that will be recording the bus scattered energy will be studying the dielectric properties that want is slow atmospheric noise high resolution the limitation is limited so cyclic calibration is required the disadvantage are roughness slopes vegetation cover for my passive microwave you have got bright temperature dielectric properties soil temperature 
will be observed the advantage is low atmospheric noise some vegetation penetration low resolution limitation roughness vegetation coverage and temperature so you can see that uh, the active remote sensing provide you some penetration is there so if you want to go for the subsurface level study or the moisture content you can use uh, the ground weight some of the data sets you can see it being used to see the moisture content so using the satellite remote sensor you can see the various types of moisture content that are available over the different decades and you can see the uh, exact amount of moisture what is the status what is the station globally you can see the index and the latitude longitude is portrayed and you can see your area of interest and then you can understand ki whether the wetness index is increasing or decreasing and what are the kind of uh, remediations that we have to see and these are the various kinds of for geostationary satellites that are used to identify the different kinds of uh, flood affected area in different dates in different channels so you can see that if you are using a multi temporal data sets optical image is for uh, the flood affected area demarcation it's quite tough to identify the areas which are flood affected as you will be seeing that the maximum area is under cloud cover uh, the left hand side on the right hand side of the image so if you want to have a real understanding and the aerial spread if you want to see Uh, it's uh, impossible that's why you have to use the microwave data sets where you can use the different algorithms you can use the different uh, methods to identify the exact flood affected areas mapping and delineation so you can see that uh, there were, uh, this area is a part of indo-gangetic plain where the gandak river uh, gagra are part of uh, sun river are part of uh, the great in uh, ganges river system and uh, it's a flood affected area that you will be always finding in each and every year this areas are uh, recurrently recurrently they are flood affected near patna so you can see that the entire area which are under flood affected can be easily delineated and can be demarcated from the other land use land cover area and you can overlay with the different uh map to uh, other land use land cover thematic map to see the exact amount of damage and uh, to have the various kinds of uh, programming and what is the uh, spread over the decades came out the spread what was the starting date from 24th october to 38 we have used the sanitary data and uh, we are seeing ki how the water has uh, moved over the different decades so you can see that uh, large area is under flood affected condition so uh, the remote sensing help you to identify the synoptic overview so not only that you can see all the features that are under but many times you can see uh, i can see some of the area misclassified as uh, in the lower hand side you can see uh, these are the areas on the southern aurangabad area gaya baksar and uh, Uh, this areas are reservoir but they have been classified in the the flood affected category so many times you have to check for the accuracy of the data and that's why you have to see the data thoroughly and in between you can see some white patches in and around this area so this white patches are nothing but they are not glaciers they are not slow but they are the cloud cover so if you take a optical uh, remote sensing data uh, if you will be taking during this period the entire Area will be under ground cover, but when you are taking on the uh, other round of microwave data, you can see how clear the image is, and you can have a real understanding of the terrain. So you can have uh, different dates, ke how the river systems, because whenever you are talking about river system hydrology, they are regional features that uh, covers for thousands of kilometers. So locally, it's not possible to have a real origination, understanding the changes that has. we have created or that has been done in the river systems of india so the only source through which you can map the various river systems of india is satellite remote sensing so you can see that india is a country with a large rivers with a large river systems and the areas are currently flooded so in order to have a basic understanding and because of the increasing population you have to have the 
uh, the tool or uh, science through which you can see that uh, what was the number of days that uh, in case there is a flooding and for what days does that water stays at that particular portion of the land can be visualized using remote sensing data so you can see that uh, how beautiful how informative how visually you can connect with the data sets and anybody uh, by seeing the color by seeing the lesion can understand ki what we are trying to say so with the accurate measurement with accurate accuracy this data provides a real understanding of the terrain so this data is also used for evaporate transpiration estimation so you can see that what are the different kinds of evaporate transpiration that has happened over the different decades over different months over different times can be visually represented and you can see that uh, what is the difference this is the different kinds of evaporation map that we have prepared not only that you can see the different kinds of surface wetland what are the surface kinds of volume of water whether the water table is increasing decreasing what are the uh, different kinds of water profile what are the different kinds of sediment contained uh, because nowadays the biggest uh, challenge for the hydro powers in india are they are facing a serious problem of siltation so in order to have to know the various kinds of siltation first you have to identify their to be capacity so you have to see the capacity so in order to understand the capacity of any is is required you have to use the multi temporal data sets as well as you have to map the water level you have to mark the capacity and you have to see where to is the strength so for doing such kind of multi temporal water level understanding fluctuations in the various water levels of any reservoir or dam Uh, the satellite data is are of great help in providing the intel and the standing of, of the health of any uh, reservoir so you, you can also we can measure the water table because uh, generally it involves a lot of field exercise but remote sensing and gis is used for understanding the water table condition and the biggest uh, project and the biggest advantage and the biggest capacity and the biggest project ever in india and uh, with that the approach to remote sensing and gis team in the entire world was the groundwater rajiv gandhi national groundwater uh, mission prepared and where the multi temporal uh, data sets were overlaid and for the entire india the satellite data was generated we prepared the hydrological map at 1 is to 50000 scale then we prepared geomorphological map using satellite data sets lithological map structural maps beeps maps and on the basis of all the land use land cover maps the groundwater prospect donation was done for each and every block for each and every village for each and every district for each and every state and country as a whole and after using such data sets with the help of gis overlay analysis uh, we were able to finally delineate uh, the entire groundwater prospect into various kinds of zones key water the excellent zones water good zones water moderate zones who are the area under poor zones and finally as a state level we can provide ki what was the number of red uh, that we used to do what was the success ratio what was the failure ratio and what is the current strategy that we have to do so that we can come up with more artificial recharge sites not only that uh, the satellite images provides you in detail understanding about the different geomorphological features like if you want to go and identify the different kinds of structures like lineaments fractures and join you can see how easily and prominently they can be demarcated using satellite remote sensing as well as the valley fields abundant flood plains paleo channels axlo lakes are clearly marked paleo channels are those channels in which uh, they were uh, earlier a part of the current river system but over the decades the river has migrated its uh, direction but uh, there are the remnants that uh, this was the direction of a river so if you go into the field many times you cannot identify the pattern and what were the paleo channels because you are going on cultivating the field but when you see from our satellites so that provide you the different kinds of foxbo lake meanders the cut off uh, uh, paleo channels which are indicative of uh, tectonic activity or river migration being uh, 
recurrent in that area and you can find different kinds of structural fold, falls, dikes and such data will be used for creation of various uh, groundwater prospect donations and we will be using the gray satellites for identification and demarcation of the groundwater table uh, in India as a whole or world and we will see what is the amount of uh, water table that is fluctuated in our country whether that is increasing or decreasing or what are the problems which are the anomaly area and whether there is a slip in any irrigation activity what kind of uh, irrigation activity that we have been performing whether there is any shift or drift or whether there is called some of these uh, infections all such studies can be easily done phenological changes in the agriculture pre and post policy that pre policy there is a image that the government of india provides various funds to the various uh, central government and state government provides to various agencies so as to increase the water productivity for soil conservation, artificial recharge site uh, creation and various uh, watershed development activities are performed at local level so as to increase the water table in any particular area and you can see that uh, uh, by implementation of those policies, brief policy you see that the water table was on a poorer site but uh, most uh, policy, the measures, the mitigation measures, the funding that the government of India has given for the protection of those water aside, the water table has increased and if the water table has increased at last uh, you'll see a good amount of rainfall and not only that uh, the satellite data are also used for uh, seeing the rainfall pattern so you can see that the water the mean median mode standard deviation you can see okay, which are the areas which are receiving high amount of rainfall which are the area which are receiving low amount of rainfall and uh, finally you have to check for and you have to see the runoff because runoff are those water that are uh, we are receiving on the land but we are not protecting this runoff this is the excessive water that flows during monsoon and meets the sea so over the population is increasing the demand is increasing so the only source through which we can protect our future or we can stop this scarcity is by conserving this runoff so the more we conserve the runoff the more will be the percolation it will recharge the underground water table also we will be storing that as a surface water that can be used for irrigation that can be used for drinking that can be used for dharma, uh, domestic purposes so the main focus is our runoff so we have to see the water budgeting we have to take out the water budget okay, what is the amount of rainfall that we are receiving receiving what is the infiltration that is being done what is the evaporation what is going and what is the overall land flow that we are going so we have to have a balance we have to have a check on those area because we have to conserve this runoff in order to uh, sustain our future and if you are doing it through proper scientific understanding so uh, in coming uh, decade what uh, scarcity or the, what the demand is uh, will be solving that problem so not only that uh, the remote sensing data also provide you the various kinds of snow melt runoff modeling uh, can be done you can see which are the areas which the melting is high which are the areas where the melting is on the lower side and that provides you a basic basic understanding of the area you can see not only that that is also used for identification of uh, water contamination zone so this is a guru govin sagar lake of 2013 and this is of 19 2018 for the same area you can see that uh, there is a change in the color of the water so that is uh, indicative of the uh, contamination level so the remote sensing not only provides you the different kinds of uh, water speed or the volume it also provides about the water quality like chlorophyll content like algae what is the amount of salt what is the amount of silt what is the amount of chlorophyll what is the amount of various algal factors and we'll be using the pre and post watershed you can see and you can see that how the different indices like ndwi and dvi 
MDPI and DTI that we have done can be used to identify the different zones. So by seeing the location, we can identify that whether we are into a safe zone or we are into unsafe zone. Once you have identified the problem, ki there is a contamination. Thereafter, we'll be going for the scientific understanding ki why this problem is, whether that is because of any geogenic condition or whether that is or because of any anthropogenic activity. And if it is related to any anthropogenic activity, we'll be uh, stopping those activity sets in order to have a pure water in and around that area. So you can see that how the multi-set temporal data sets from 2012-13 14 of the same month, 15, 16, uh, then uh, during and pre and post monsoon is used to see the water uh, quality in the area and you can see whether the water quality is more during monsoon, pre monsoon, post monsoon. So such kinds of uh, water quality uh, development, water quality indexing, water quality uh, timing, the causes, the modeling can be easily done using satellite remote sensing and you can see that how easily and accurately we can map the changes that is happening in any part of the world. Uh, not only that, uh, this river migration as I have done my PhD on Indo-Gangetic Plain and this is the regular feature that is being uh, happening majority rivers that are flowing in the Indo-Gangetic Plain. So you can see from 1989, 1995, 2000, 2005 and 10 in a spam of 5-5 years what is the amount of drainage uh, direction that the river has migrated. So you can see that many river migration if you see in the field has migrated to near about in 1989 this is the position where it was flowing and now it's flowing here. So it is near about 50 to 100 kilometers they have migrated. So that is a big change that they are uh, creating and they are changing the entire land use, land cover and the entire uh, civilization, the entire mankind uh, needs to know what is the basic region, what is the reason and for uh, studying and for seeing the various kinds of changes that is happening in any river system, the causes, the geologic, tectonic, all such feature, the answer will be provided with the remote sensing data set. So you can see that what was the uh, re reward condition in 1990 in 1995, in 2000, in 2005, 2010, then 2015, 2016, 2017. So you can see that how the river system is changing over the decade. If you go into the field, if you are over there, you cannot differentiate this minor changes because uh, it's tough to identify. But when you are using the multi-temporal data sets, anybody can see Okay, what is the amount of changes so it's more than near about if you go it's more than 100 kilometers now this river has migrated if you compare with 1990 and 2010 you can see that the river has totally changed its direction and now it's again flowing into its earlier direction so many times what happens that the people go and construct the various kinds of houses the settlements they start doing cultivation but this river in case again someday that will have an excessive amount of water that will be the beyond the carrying capacity of the river so river will again come back to its earlier direction that is known as value channel so at that point of time that can create a havoc in that area so you have to have an understanding and you have to have a, a scientific knowledge to the entire water set species delineate in wetlands we have already stated how the different kinds of wetlands we will be using the satellite remote sensing for identification of various kinds of wetlands where whether that is related to, to the uh, future so we'll be using this uh, more of the satellite data will be used for creation of new hydrological models and this all data sets are uh, available in Veda's uh, site and NRSC and you can use these data sets for your day-to-day -day activity so you can see that how remote sensing GIS techniques is of uh, great help to the society and uh, we can use these data sets for not only mapping and modeling the flood, drought, disaster, desertification, wetlands 
so um, it's uh, very useful i am uh, uh, did my phd on wetlands on flood uh, its causes i went into the each and every parcel of uh, the field uh, during my phd so i'll be sharing my experiences the field photograph the data sets so uh, that has changed the phd has changed the entire life of mine and uh, various portions of india so it's my always uh, suggestion to all the fellows who aims for higher study that india need good scientists india need good persons india need more uh, talented person in the field of remote sensing and gis because this subject uh, allows you to dream high to dream for the humanity to solve for the Uh, society and if you, uh, you have a dream for serving the society if you want to do something for the world if you want to do something for india if you want to have a name and fame this is the subject that will be providing you entire name frame and you can uh, convert your thoughts into action and finally when it will be implemented you will be the most happiest person of the world that uh, your plans are now being implemented and the people their social economic condition has changed now they are very happy their money has increased so uh, that's all for today's class and uh, again we'll have a 10 minutes of group discussion there after 10 minutes of quiz in your lms with this i'll end my presentation